Hi everyone, I'm Jess Hathaway, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of National Fishermen, and I'm here today with Roger May of Northwest Fish, who is now the President and Chief Growth Officer for Peter Pan Seafoods. Hi Roger. Good evening. It's good to have you. Um, so first, I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our audience and give us an overview of Northwest Fish. Well, my name is Roger May. I've been doing this uh, for 35 plus years. Uh, started as a college marketing project back in the early 80s. And we're doing internationally marketing and we actually had to take something and we decided to market salmon from Canada and bring it into Hawaii because it was very, very little work to do. And after we did that on paper, we were asked to actually sell that item and we didn't have to come back to class and we got an A. So we ended up selling 10,000 pounds of that item. And by the time I got out of college six years later, we had 30 some college kids selling seafood around Hawaii. So that was, that was the beginning of it all. And we ended out, Oh, jumping in with Copper River Seafoods in the mid 90s. And from there had Smoky Foods, which had processing facilities in Seattle. We bought uh, the salmon farms in Seattle, Washington, which housed about 20 million pounds of live fish. And fast forwarding to 2007, we sold the salmon farming operations, uh, which was American Gold and Smoky Foods to Icicle Seafoods. And that took us out of the fish business for a few years and left us with Northwest Fish as a trading division. And we diversified a little bit at that point and got into some movie making, which we've had a lot of fun making movies with John Travolta and Criminal Activities and Mother's Day with Jennifer Aniston and Kate Hudson. And then the last one was Animal Crackers with Danny DeVito and Gilbert Godfrey and Sylvester Stallone on an animated fun movie. And that brings us further towards today where we've combined our Northwest fish and folded it in with the acquisition of Peter Pan with some amazing partners in McKinley Capital and RRG, which we couldn't ask for a, a better match uh, with bringing Alaska and bringing more jobs back to Alaska, adding value uh, instead of exporting those jobs to China and overseas. And RRG's uh, specialty is renewable resources and sustainability. So it's just a perfect fit uh, with McKinley being an Alaskan company and their investments there. And RRG with their sustainability and our story with uh, marketing and bringing things domestic and adding more value. So there's, there's a two minute thumbnail. That's great. Thank you. That's a wild ride. That sounds like, um... Sounds like a plot to a movie. <laughs> um, so I have to ask you, Roger, you know, you, you mentioned Copper River Seafoods. You said that was the in the 1990s that you invested in Copper River Seafoods. And, and that brand is really significant in the fishing industry, especially when it comes to Alaska fish, Alaska salmon. It was, you know, one of the pioneer lone shark brands of, of Alaska salmon and you know, sort of famous for being the first fish of the summer season. <clears throat> now I understand that you, did you divest your interest from Copper River? Is that right? Yes, uh, yeah. great company, great brand, great people there. We divested in that about two years ago and you know, moved on to preparing and, and focusing on Northwest fish and which ended up becoming uh, the major part of the Peter Pan story. Right, so, um, so what inspired this 
investment in Peter Pan? You know, what about this acquisition really appealed to you? Were you already sourcing from them for Northwest Fish or how did this, you know, become a twinkle in your eye? We've been one of their largest customers, if not their largest domestic customer for a couple decades. Uh, so we had great uh, experience with them and their product lines. Uh, we are a match made in heaven. They were on one side, you know, a, a wonderful, you know, resource. They, they have the million square foot of production. They have the facilities in perfect locations for what we needed. Um, you know, they were more of a commodity company and you know japanese owned with a mindset to supply themselves in japan and we were on the opposite end of the spectrum we we had no direct access no million square foot of production in alaska and we were deep into value added uh and into the domestic market and both of our models were broken you you, you you needed resource and the, the production in Alaska to make our model complete. And they needed the value added domestic customers, you know, versus a commodity company to make their model complete. So both of our broken models uh, now kind of leave us as the favorites, um, you know, going forward. Uh, we are very, very vertical and very much value added, thus bringing many more jobs, you know, per pound of fish uh, than it was. Yeah, that's great. So speaking of more jobs, are you looking to grow the team in 2021? Is that part of your vision for the year? Absolutely. Yeah, so that's the executive team or it's production lines, everything across the board? Everything. We, we plan on taking the, the wonderful team that is at Peter Pan and just adding to it and to add to it, we're going to do more pounds of fish and we're going to do more to the pounds of fish that we have. Great. So can you talk a little bit about some of your longer term goals? Like what's your long long term vision? Um, to build and to continue to grow this wonderful brand um, you know, and, and having goals with, you know, poundage or dollar of those but the biggest goal is to have something that's going to be around for another 100 years uh, peter pan has got an amazing story uh, it's been around for over 100 years already and you know the longest operating cannery in alaska and our goal is just to continue that tradition making sure that it's secured its place in history for the next 100 years and making it a bigger better company yeah. So um, on that note, I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, the, the domestic seafood market right now. You know, no one would have predicted this time last year that a global pandemic would boost domestic sales of frozen, canned, but specifically sustainable seafood. And yet, you know, here we are. That's where we are. Um, and Peter Pan is really uniquely positioned to take advantage of that market with its, um, you know, its market share of, or its ability to, to produce canned product. So I guess what I'd like to hear from you is if you, if you had to make a prediction or if you could like make a wish for the domestic seafood market in 2021, what would that look like? Well, we're, we're definitely because of the pandemic and because of so many unknowns and uncertainties, we're in an adapt, adapt or perish moment in life is the way I look at it. And you got to be nimble and you got to be able to adapt to what's thrown at you. And nobody knows what the future brings, you know, whether it's with COVID or the fish runs. But I can say that we are very nimble, very much aware of our need and ability to adapt to what the customer wants. And so, you know, I guess my one wish is that a the pandemic does go away and you know if I had to wish number two that lots of fish is going to show up but we're prepared for everything in between yeah yeah that's I would imagine that's pretty much everyone's wish right now especially 
looking ahead at the spring and summer seasons in Alaska. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what is next for Northwest Fish in general? Are you looking to expand investments in the lower 48 or elsewhere in Alaska? Yeah, I, we're going to keep a very open mind. You know, this is definitely a platform, uh, you know, platform that McKinley's going to be looking at bolting things onto RRG and, you know, ourselves as Northwest Fish Peter Pan. And it's an amazing platform. And, it, you know, there's going to be many natural opportunities to bolt onto this. And we look forward to looking into those one at a time. Yeah. So lots of opportunities, but also certainly some challenges. What are your biggest stumbling blocks right now? Um, it, it's just getting our feet underneath us. Um, you know, I love where we're at. I love, you know, how we look on paper. Um, I love the fact that we're nimble. Uh, you know, we have so much going for us and you know, we just, we got to just continue to hit the ground running, pushing forward and realize what our customers' needs are and set very high standards and high goals and achieve them. Yeah. Are you hearing from your customers right now? Absolutely. What kind of feedback are you getting? <laughs> They're excited. I mean, you know, this is a, we've been, as you kind of stated, there's been a big demand for Alaskan products. Well, this product's been going overseas or quite a bit of it has. And so, you know, we're able to, you know, offer something that nobody else can. It's, you know, without anything changing, we have new product to bring into the market that was going away. Those jobs were going away. So it's very exciting. The story is exciting. The fact that, you know, it's coming back, you know, from foreign grounds to American owned and Alaskan owned. Uh, the fact that you know, the jobs, no matter what, you know, aren't going to be exported. Um, but no, it, it is a, a phenomenal story, and it's something that our, our customers are embracing and excited about. Yeah, it is a good story, a great story to tell. Um, so I talked to Rob yesterday, and one of the things I asked him is, you know, if you could say something to your fleet members, or because this is National Fisherman, that's that's our audience. Um, you know, what would you tell them if you could send them a message, fleet members or potential fleet members? The first thing is we're here to listen. We're here to win their hearts over. Uh, we're here to, to give them service. Uh, but it, it all boils down to listening. We, we will be that company, you know, that's going to be their future. We want them to be happy. We want them to be around. We want to reverse the trend of, you know, having boats leave and bring, you know, boats in. We are going to build this fleet and we know the only way we're going to do it is by listening and outperforming expectations. And there's our goal. Yeah, that's great. So we're here for them. Thanks. Any uh, prospects on a good fishing movie to come? <laughs> We're definitely uh, going to keep our eyes and ears open, but there's lots and lots of cool Alaskan stories to be told. Sure. And I think we can actually fit into one of those. Yeah, great. I would love to see it. Keep me posted. I most certainly will. Uh, anything you want to add before we close out? No, other than, again, yeah, well, we're looking forward to this chapter of, of our life, of Peter Pan's life. Uh, McKinley is excited. Uh, RRG is excited. And you know, we want to hear from you know, this fleet. We want to hear from the Alaskan fishermen. And we want to we want to prove to them that we are going to be that company they want to fish for. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Roger. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you soon, live and in person, maybe. <laughs> I look forward to it. You have a wonderful day and thank you for taking the time. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.